So here I'll work out this problem um, having to do with the photoelectric effect. It's from a different textbook. It's not from the usual textbook that we use, uh, but it's a good problem anyway. So see, it's a photoelectric effect using a sodium surface, stopping potential of 1.85 volts for a wavelength of 300 nanometers, and then a different stopping potential 0 0.820 volts for a different wavelength of 400 nanometers. And then there's a series of questions from these data, find a value for Planck's constant, a work function for sodium, and then the cutoff wavelength for sodium. So the first step when you're approaching a problem is to try to conceptualize the problem, um, process the information, what is it asking for, what are you given, and draw a picture if you can. So the first thing I'm going to do is circle the things that I think are important in the problem and uh, box the things that are being asked for. So I've gone ahead and circled in green the things that I think are important. In this case, not too much information given in the problem. The material, that might be important. And then we have two different stopping potentials and two different wavelengths. That's basically all the information we have. Put a box around the, the things that you're trying to find. In this case, it's spelled out very clearly, but not always the case. So if you have a more complicated problem, you might want to have to parse through it and put a box around the thing that's being asked for here. It's very clear. And then maybe write down, uh, if it's not asked for in variables or in um, letters, might be a good uh, place to do that. So Planck's constant, the standard letter for that is H. So if you're working with a formula sheet, you can sort of look on your formula sheet for the thing you're looking for and the work function is phi. So you need to be able to know um, what all of the letters given on a formula sheet mean in words so that you can translate the words into equations. So we're looking for h and phi. The next step will be to draw a picture. So let's start by trying to represent uh, graphically what's going on in the problem. So I've gone ahead and drawn some pictures that represent the situation. This is the usual sort of photoelectric effect uh, setup. We've got our sodium surface is here. So those are the sodium surfaces. Light is coming in. Initially, the light has wavelength lambda 1, which is going, we're going to label lambda 1 as 300 nanometers. And then electrons are being emitted from the surface, traveling to the right. But we're slowing them down with a stopping potential here. And so that we have exactly the right stopping potential, 1.85 volts, they're going to stop right before they hit that, that plate on the right. And then we have exactly the same situation again, but just with a different wavelength and a different stopping potential. So we've got all of the information in front of us. We have basically the same situation twice, just with different values. So now we need to start choosing the relevant equations that we know in order to start solving the problem. So what physics do we need to solve this problem? It's not really a huge mystery because it says photoelectric effect in the problem. So we know we need to use the photoelectric effect. We need the main equation for the photoelectric effect. And that is an equation which basically I understand it, it's just conservation of energy. The initial energy of the photon coming in, so we have pho photons coming in, they have some energy. That photon gets absorbed and disappears and it's out we get an electron. So initial energy is the photon energy and then that gets transformed into the kinetic energy of the electron. But it's not quite so simple because the electron is bound inside of that sodium. So some of the photon's energy is, uh, is, needs to go into increasing the potential energy of the electron. You need to give it some energy to get it out of its bonds, to break its bonds, to raise it up out of the well, uh, the potential well that it's in. And we call that the work function. So we have that main equation, E photon, Initial energy is the photon energy. The final energy is the kinetic energy of the electron. In the process of releasing the electron, we needed some additional energy, which we call the work function. 
Now, unfortunately, this equation doesn't look so useful yet because there's a bunch of things in the problem like lambda and stopping potential, which we don't have uh, in this equation. So we need to do a little bit more work. We need photon energy. We know the energy of the photon is equal to hf, or you could write it as hc over lambda, which is more useful for us. It has the wavelength in it. So that can go into here. Phi is a quantity we're looking for. We also need to relate the kinetic energy of the electron to the stopping voltage. And that is, again, through conservation of energy. So if I do delta k plus delta u for the electron is equal to 0. This is k final minus k initial plus delta u is equal to 0. And the final kinetic energy of the electron is 0, because that's when it stops. So this is going to be 0. The initial kinetic energy is what we just call Ke. And then I need to relate my electric potential energy delta U to voltage. And the main equation for that is delta U is equal to Q delta V. Equals to zero. And so out of this equation, I get that the kinetic energy of the electron is Q delta V. And so this will be substituted in here. So those are all the relevant physics now. We have uh, combining all these things together, we can start working on the problem. So collecting the information that I wrote on the previous slide, I started with this main equation, the photoelectric effect, and then I put in for the energy of the photon, hc over lambda. And then for the kinetic energy of the electron, we said we're measuring that with my stopping potential. So Ke is E times the stopping potential. So we have this now. This equation looks quite useful because it has lambda, which is given, delta V stop, which is given. And what does not, what are we looking for is we're looking for H and we're looking for phi. We have two unknowns, right? We know everything else in this equation. But luckily, there's two situations here, right? We have situation one is here, and situation two is here. So in fact, we have two equations and two unknowns. We can write this equation twice. So I would write it the first time. I would write it as hc over lambda 1 is equal to e delta v1 plus phi. And then the second equation, I have hc over lambda 2 is equal to E delta V2 plus phi. Remember that phi is the same for both because phi depends only on the material. It's a sodium surface. So I use the same symbol phi for both of those. So I have now two equations and two unknowns. The unknowns are H and phi. So this is now an algebra problem. I need to think about how do I plan out this algebra. Well, the first thing I could do is I could get rid of phi, right? So plan for part A would be to subtract 1 from 2. That would get rid of phi and then solve for h. That would give us h. And then once I have h, I can go back to either 1 or 2. So let's just say 1. 
and solve for phi. So we have now a plan to attack the algebra, and now we just have to do it. So the first step of our plan was subtract 1 from 2. Take 1 minus 2. On the left hand side, I've got hc over lambda 1 minus hc over lambda 2. On the right hand side, I've got e delta v1 plus phi. So I'm subtracting those two equations minus e delta v2 plus phi. And like we said, the work functions will cancel out. And I can write this a little bit differently. 1 over lambda 1 minus 1 over lambda 2 is equal to e delta v1 minus delta v2. Let's keep going. Let's put this over a common denominator. So hc lambda 2 minus lambda 1 over lambda 1 times lambda 2, the right hand side stays the same, delta v1 minus delta v2. And then we can go ahead and solve this for h. h is going to be e divided by c, lambda 1 lambda 2 over lambda 1, lambda 2 minus lambda 1 times delta v1 minus delta v2. Everything on the right hand side is known or given and h is the target variable for part a. So at this point we have an algebraic formula. All we have to do is plug in the numbers to solve for h. So let's take this formula and plug in all of the information, making sure to include the units. So let me pause the narration and do this a little bit quickly. There are all the numbers. Notice I've been careful to convert the nanometers into meters. And out of this I get 6.59 times 10 to the minus 34. And then let's check the units. Let's be careful with the units. We've got on the top Coulombs, meters squared, volts. And then on the bottom, I've got two meters. I've got meters squared per second. So we notice that the meter squareds are going to cancel out the top and the bottom. So I've got here uh, the units of H are coulombs times volts times seconds. And then to simplify this, remember that one volt is one joule per coulomb. So these things together tell me that the units of H are going to be coulombs times joules per coulomb times seconds, which is a joule second. We can just leave it as that. That's usually the units that H is given in. So these units are good. The units check out. And you can see that the, the number checks out as well, because some of you might know the answer, or the, the accepted value of h is 6.62 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. And this is quite close to that. So since we're on the right order of magnitude, we're only off by a few percent here. The units work out. We have some confidence in this answer. Now let's move on to part b. Since we have the value for h, we can take either one of these equations and solve for phi. So I'll just take equation 1. Phi is going to be hc over lambda 1 minus e delta v1. And now we know h, we know c, we know lambda, so we can plug numbers into this equation. So here are the numbers plugged in. I've been careful to put everything in SI units, and then I know I'll get an SI unit out. The number that comes out is 3.63 times 10 to the minus 19. Let's check the units. 
there's a meter on the top and a meter on the bottom, and a seconds here and a seconds here, those cancel. So this is in joules. The two terms should have the same units. So this one over here, remember one volt is one joule divided by one coulomb. So a volt times a coulomb is also equal to a joule. So the joules are the right units here. Typically work functions are given units of EV, so you can convert this over to EV very simply. And that's what the conversion looks like. So our answer is 2.27 EV for the work function. So finally, we've answered parts A and B. We did some checking along the way, so we already checked that the units work out. So the units are good for both of those. And the, so H has the right units, Phi has the right units. We didn't make any mistakes with units. The other thing you can check is, uh, do the numbers seem reasonable? And we already checked that H uh, is close, very close to the accepted value. So that's good. And then this would take some more experience. If you solve more of these problems, you get used to what a reasonable value for a work function is. But work functions phi for metals is usually around, you know, roughly 1 to 10 EV. If we got something that was 100 EV or 1,000, that would seem too big. If we got 0 0.0001, that would seem too small. So this is on the right order of magnitude. So the units are good and the numbers are reasonable, so that's going to be our final answer. We don't have to go back and check anything. Let's move on to part C now, We're asking for the cutoff wavelength for sodium. We can try to go a little bit faster through this one. So I'm going to try to do all six steps at once, not going so slow. Conceptualize, what is the cutoff wavelength, lambda C? What does that mean? Remember, that means that the electrons are just barely, barely released from the metal. Or in other words, if lambda is bigger than lambda C, I get no electron emission. If you think about what that means in terms of our um, photoelectric effect equation, hc over lambda is the kinetic energy of the electrons plus phi. If the electrons are barely released, that means that they come off with no kinetic energy. So kinetic energy is zero, will happen when my incoming wavelength is lambda c. So we have now the conceptual foundation our physics approach is again this photoelectric effect equation and it's a simple matter now to solve this for lambda c to h c over phi and we can plug in the numbers here are all the numbers in si units and that turns out to be 547 nanometers now to check it, well, we can check the units. Joules on the top, joules on the bottom, seconds here, seconds here. It's meters, and then I converted it over to nanometers. To think about um, whether this makes sense, we can at least compare it to the information given in the problem. So if lambda is bigger than lambda c, there's no electron emission. But we know that electrons are emitted if we have 300 nanometers for the wavelength or if we have 400 nanometers for the wavelength. If we got a number which was below 300 or 400, that wouldn't make any sense because we know that electrons are emitted for 300 nanometer light or 400 nanometer light. But the number we got was above those two, 547. So at least it passes that basic check. The units work out. The number that I'm getting is larger than the wavelengths given in the problem where it had electrons being emitted, so at least we have some confidence. So that's going to be our final answer. And I hope that you found this problem and that using this problem-solving method useful.